All right, now that we've got our table of contents all created, it's time to generate our table of authorities. We're going to use the um, references tab up here. We're going to go over to this table of authorities menu. We're going to use this mark citation menu in order to actually create our table of authorities so we don't have to do it manually. Uh, first thing, let's go in and go ahead and make a heading for the of authority. You'll have to forgive my spelling. So we've got the heading. We've got where we're going to put the table of authorities for now. Uh, the first step is to mark our citations. So in order to do this, we need to find our first citation. We just happen to have it here in the standard of review. We go ahead. We highlight that text. Go to references. Click on mark citation. So here we see the selected text. This is going to be the form your, your citation is going to take in the actual table of authorities. So we want that to be generic. We don't want pin sites in there. So we go ahead and we highlight that and delete the pin site. So now we have a generic citation to the case, which is exactly what we want. We need to make sure we're in the right category. You see there are several categories, 16 to be in fact. Uh, you assign categories because the categories divide up within the table of authorities, right? So all the cases are with cases, all the statutes are with statutes, all the constitutional provisions would be, would be with all the constitutional provisions. Uh, in this case, I only have cases and statutes, so I'm just going to stick to those two categories. If you want to customize them, you can go into the category menu here and you can change them in and out if you want to separate, you know, Ohio Supreme Court versus fourth uh, appellate district versus this versus that. You can do that as well if you want to get more detailed. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with cases and statutes. So this is a case, so we put in the cases category. Uh, the short citation is just for you. So it it shows up down here when you're citing to the same thing over and over again. You can use this so you're not creating a new entry every time. So we're just going to get rid of that. I keep it at, at pretty short, so we'll keep it at people versus Delgado, and we'll mark it. So this adds this little bit of text to the end here. This is all hidden text in these paragraph symbols, these paragraph symbols and dots and dashes and all that stuff is always in your paper, it's just hidden. So when we go back to the home menu, you'll see this is darkened here. If you click on the paragraph symbol there, it disappears. It's just trying to show you that this is the work that it's actually doing. So back in the references tab, all right, so we have citation, we can click next citation and it finds our next citation. So here we have this section symbol here, we go New York Penal Law, Highlight the text, New York Penal Law, Section 7006B1. Uh, for the actual citation, we're going to get rid of the B1 because we want it to be generic, not a pin site. And we need to make sure that we are going and categorizing this as a statute because this is a statute. So let's go ahead and shorten the short citation to that. And then we can click Mark. See, now if we click Next Citation, it takes us straight to People versus Ola here. So basically what this Next Citation button does is it searches for section symbols, and it searches for a lowercase v with a period after it, because that signifies a case or a statute. If you are using ids, you will see I have an id right here. It will skip over them. So be sure to manually go back and check and make sure that you are getting all of those ids, because it, it, it is important if you are you know using an id the next page or something like that, that the citation is marked on both of those pages so your table of authorities is accurate. So here we have an id referring back to the penal law. So we highlight that, we click on the citation down here to mark it, and then we click mark. So now it is assigned to be this New York Penal Law 7006. All right, we're going to add a couple more and then I'll show you how to generate it just because I don't want to spend a ton of time marking every single citation in my paper, even though you will mark every citation in your paper. So here we go to State versus Ola, make it a case, get rid of the pin site, and shorten the short site to just people versus Ola and mark it. Here we'll go down to the next one. If I can actually highlight here. There we go. Burgos, add in that par that parenthesis because I messed up. That clear this down. And mark. Okay, and we'll go. We'll add another one. Why not? Gibson, remove pin sight. Shorten the short sights. 
and mark. Okay, so now just imagine I did that for the rest of my paper. You go back up underneath the table of authorities here, and we are going to insert our table of authorities. So you click on this there. Uh, it brings up a similar menu to the table of contents. So you'll want to use all the categories because if you are citing stuff in other cat, if you're not putting stuff in categories, you're probably not citing to it, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you want to make sure you are using a leader. Keep the leader the same as the table of contents. So here I'm going to use the dots from template is fine. Use passum. Passum just means if you're citing to something throughout the entire paper. So if you cite on page one, two, three, four, five, all of them, it'll just say passum, which means throughout. And then keep original formatting. We'll keep everything with the parentheses and all that kind of stuff. So we'll click OK. And we'll see everything is now added. So we have cases, we have statutes, and the page numbers that they're assigned. It also puts everything into alphabetical order, which is nice. So when you are going through and adding all your stuff after you actually mark everything, if you make some changes, if you do anything differently, you can go back to references and you can just update the table. It will add new sources, it will add, um, it will change the page numbers, it will do all that stuff. So this is a really handy way for you to not have to go through and do all of that work yourself. All right, well, now that we've created our table of authorities, we're ready to start setting up our page numbering. I know, the most exciting thing. Um, but go ahead and stay tuned for the next video, and we'll go over how to paginate your brief.